Hi, this is Tim, and uh, Adventures in Astronomy continue. Um, I've purchased this um, little box here, which is called an EQ drive, and this is actually a complete telescope drive system, which is kind of amazing. So just for scale, here's my phone. Um, so let's um, put those side by side. And as you can see, the um, it's about the size of a large matchbox, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller than a large matchbox. If you got two normal sized boxes and matches and put them side by side, that would be about the size of it. So um, this is the basic model they sell, and I've purchased this for uh, about one hundred and seventy dollars, I think. So un well under one hundred and fifty quid. So um, it's actually quite expensive on that basis because. In here is essentially an arm processor and two stepper motor drivers. Um, so it's like, it's about, if you consider you can buy a Raspberry Pi for £35 and that's all that's in here really. Um, it's kind of expensive, but for a telescope drive system, it's dirt cheap. And uh, this has a, on this end, it has a connector for you know the the d type connector here is where you connect your stepper motors there's a connector here for a sensor but i believe that is for you can also use it as a focuser driver um which basically then you just use one of the motors and then there's a temperature sensor and a home sensor that you can use but i don't think that's used in telescope mode and then on the other end we have a usb connector a connector for a hand controller which is a takes a Synscan um, Skywatcher hand controller and then power connector I think that takes up to 24 volts at 2 amps um, you can power it from anything from 9 volts up to 24 volts I think so um, it's interesting I'm going to try this on my telescope and see how it works so um, first of all um, I have a stepper motor here, which I've borrowed from another project. And uh, let me just uh, put those side by side. This stepper motor has a 15 to 1 uh, planetary gearbox on it. And um, it's got a rather big drive shaft. So it's more probably overkill. You, in a telescope, you probably just have this motor or maybe even a smaller one. And I've just put on here a um a, a d connector breakout box straight onto the stepper motor so i'm actually going to turn that around that way because we're not interested in the gearbox and uh, let's turn it over like this and then we can we can connect that into the eq drive just like that okay so um in terms of software it comes with this um configuration utility uh, if I can find it, EQ drive, EQ drive, there it is, EQ drive. And it takes a little while to load. I've got Visual Studio running in the background, um, so that's why it's, my system's a bit bogged down. Okay, so nice splash screen. So you've got mount or focuser mode. So we're going to use mount mode next. And then we can um, connect to the correct COM port, which um, oh, I haven't plugged it in yet. So the COM port's not there. Um, so we need power and USB. So I've got a, a 12 volt power supply here, which can supply two amps nice spark as you plug it in sometimes and uh, USB and in we go tiddly pom okay so let's um, 
make sure that's in view and then back to the software now we've got com8 which is the right one we can read the device parameters and that it comes in um, as to how to set it up now I've actually got a support request open at the moment because they want you to enter some sort of gear ratio in here but it says range 1 to 2000 seconds well how do you enter a gear ratio in seconds I'm not really quite sure what they mean there and they might mean what's the worm period which is on my scope is 480 seconds but then say let's say there's a 15 to 1 gearbox on your motor how do you specify that well there's nowhere to put that so the number you put in here obviously isn't in seconds and uh, or if it is it needs not to be and so I've asked them um, also for the declination drive what do you put in there what how do you specify seconds for a declination drive when there's no worm period even so it just doesn't make any sense so I've written off to them to see what they want to do about that and then you've got um, options to reverse either axis here if you need to and then this is this is quite interesting There's, they they say they've got a stepless vector stepping algorithm uh, it uses a, a stepless vector algorithm well okay that's marketing uh, let's call it journalistic license to be polite um, because right this is a stepper motor you have to drive it by stepping it and there's no there's no two ways around that you can micro step it so basically you can make the step smaller and smaller until they effectively don't exist but but nevertheless it's a discrete device and you have to step it so I think what they're saying here is they're doing micro stepping but they are basically using a lookup table instead of just using a straight sine curve which it is by default you can uh, you can sort of change these parameters so if we put in some wacky parameters here you can see that um, things go a bit crazy and so what they're saying is instead of being a straight sine curve you can generate different micro step curves and and to me that's still micro stepping it's just they've they're a bit fancier than most people and they let you do a, a non-constant power to get constant torque is I think is what they're saying so anyway you can set the maximum motor current here now these these motors will take um, 1.2 amps I believe is their rating so we could up that now given that the supply can only can only supply 2 amps um, I'm not quite sure what that would do and if you hover over this it says maximum motor current 1 amp stroke 2 amps well is it 1 amp or is it 2 amps which is it come on people so anyway we can we can write those settings into the device and they will be permanently saved so I should mention that I believe this is a Russian design and it's manufactured and sold in the Ukraine so uh, if you're thinking of ordering one of these it will take about a month to get to you from when you order it so uh, allow some time um, so anyway um, having uh, having set those parameters we can now test it we can enable the motor at which point there's a healthy clunk and we can click the RA button uh, we haven't set a rate so the rate set to zero here so if I set that up to maximum rate which is 800 sidereal hold the button and you can see here the motors going round now depending on the parameters you set you you can actually it can really make that motor sing but you know you, you probably wouldn't want it to go too fast on a, on a telescope normally um, because the thing is the, the faster you go the less torque you can generate in general and um, at some point it's going to stall the motor so you have to be careful so you can also set it to track RA in which case it just keeps going until you un untick the box and um, you can read the voltage so you see, as you can see my power supply is supplying 11.9 volts and the driver is receiving 11.6 of that so if I put on track RA then in theory 
1.2 amps should be going to that motor and you can reread this and you can see that it's not dragging the supply down so the supply is doing a good job there okay and then we can disable those motors and as I say write to the device and you can save profiles and low profiles and things like that so that's that little utility now what about using this for astronomy so if we load up say Astro Planner which is um, probably a lesser known um, astronomy app because it's not really a planetarium it's um it's kind of an um it fills a niche that a lot of the planetariums try to do but not very well and it's it doesn't focus on getting a like a photorealistic display but it does focus on helping you to find things to observe and uh making observing plans and things like that so um i will i, I won't demo too many of the features of Astro Planner, but basically at at its base level it is a list of stuff to observe and these are targets from the Hoys Caps program in here and so I'm going to just change my setting to home and then I'm going to in here I've already defined this uh, EQ drive test system that I'm going to use so I can select that and then I can connect to the telescope and there will be some beeps Beep. Okay, so we get this software called EQ ASCOM, EQ Mod ASCOM, which is a a thing that's designed to work with um, the Skywatcher EQ5 mounts, I think. Yeah, EQ Mod H E Q5 and six. So, um, but this is actually a rather nice piece of driver software. And it's got lots of capabilities. So if I open up the setup pane, you know, you, you can see there's loads of knobs and bells and whistles in there, which I'm not even going to look at. But uh, for our purposes, if I now try to use the east and west buttons, then nothing's happening. Why is that? Because I'm not tracking probably. Um... Oh, because I haven't set a rate. Let's pull down the RA rate to 800 sidereal. Go east. Okay, and there you go. You can see the motors turning there now. Okay. So we can uh, move that out of the way onto another screen I've got. And now we can pick one of these targets. Now we're currently highlighting visible targets. So this guy here, the one at the top, should be visible and we should be able to slew to it so i'll click slew to object uh warning yeah we know that so there we go and this is this is slewing and if we go into the sky view on astro planner then you can see the telescope started at the north celestial pole and now it's slewing down to the object okay so this is good we've got in theory, as long as we can get the right parameters set up in the EQ drive, we can, we've now got a telescope. Um, and I'm, obviously, I've only connected one motor. There would be this is the right ascension motor. There would be a declination motor as well. Um, so this is interesting, and I don't know. I've tried, you know, stopping this with my fingers, and it it seems to have a reasonable amount of torque there. And so I think what I'm going to do is wire this up, not this, because my telescope's already got stepper motors, which are a bit smaller than this. But I'm going to I'm going to wire this guy up to my telescope and see if he can actually drive it. And that'll be rather interesting. So um, given the price of it, if it works, it's an amazing piece of equipment. So uh, what I'll be doing over the next few days is um, I have to buy some uh, DIN sockets because my motors have got DIN plugs on them so I'll buy some DIN sockets I'll wire them into this little breakout unit and I'll I'll hook that up to my telescope in TAO and we'll see how it goes stay tuned for the next installment <laughs>